Kia ora and welcome to Baha'i On Air. My name is Miley Doherty and today I will be talking to Peter Bruce who last night gave a talk on the relationship between economics and spirituality at the Auckland Baha'i Centre. Yeah, we've got this business world view that um, tells us what the world's like and then on the other hand we've got this spiritual world view and you know what you're meant to do is you're meant to leave one at the door when you, when you go to work. Now that's changing and what I've been trying to do over the last 10 years or more is to try and integrate those two worldviews. Welcome to the program, Pat. Thanks, Miley. Great to be here. It's wonderful that you could join us. So last night I attended the public meeting that you gave and it was just fascinating to hear your thoughts on the relationship between economics and spirituality. How did you become interested in this subject? I need to take you back to answer that. I've been a Baha'i for 30 years, you know, so over that time I guess I've got to see things from a Baha'i perspective, but at the same time I, I, I teach, I teach um, business management at North Tech, and teaching business you have to, um, you've got to be immersed in that world too. So one way to approach that is to just sort of divorce yourself from either of those sort of situations, you know, but it doesn't work for me that way. What I've strived to do in my teaching and uh, in my studies too, is to see where those two worlds can intersect. And if we look at the world at the moment, the way it is, really our economics have been sort of divorced from spirituality. And, and I, I really think that that's fundamentally why we've got such massive economic problems. Last night you talked a little bit about this um, analogy of, of the world as a ship and economics as what is happening underneath it. Can you just explain to the Baha'i on Air um, viewers a little bit about that? Well the metaphor is that the, the world economy is a ship and it's got a whole lot of barnacles on its hull you know? and it's just getting weighed down and it's going slower and slower and slower because of the weight of dysfunction and, and the, actually the weight of the cargo too it has to carry. And if you start to analyse the economy you can see that the incredible amount of dysfunction that we suffer in the world is actually creating a massive weight on the economy. And, and it's, just, it's just stripping the world of its, of, of its prosperity. And it's getting harder and harder and harder. And of course the ship is just going slower and slower. In the Baha'i faith, this notion of happiness is really important. Not just happiness in terms of how I feel, but mm fundamentally my spiritual happiness. Mm. Can you just explain a little bit about the relationship between happiness as you see it and economics and the way that we function in the world? Where I work, I've got this uh, quotation from the Baha'i writings above, above my desk. It's sort of, it really is my charter. Because um, in it, it states that the whole function, the whole objective of the institutions in the world and the laws is for human happiness. I, I tend to take things in the Baha'i writings fairly um, uh, literally. So I've come to the conclusion that if an organisation isn't contributing to human happiness, we're probably better off without it. So that, that happiness is fundamental. In fact, in the Baha'i faith, happiness is compulsory. And what a wonderful way to be. Last night when you were speaking about the economy, you talked about it that there's three different aspects mm. of it. Yeah, I've identified three aspects of the economy. There's the productive economy. Those are the, and that can either be commercial or non-commercial. You know, that, that, that's things like schools and roads and places where they make food and um, hospitals. That's all good stuff. It's all, it's all hopefully working towards human well-being because that's what the economy you know, should be all about. And you've got that, that, that's one sector of the economy if you imagine it as a pie graph. Then you've got another sector of the economy which is the destructive economy. Now we still indulge in wars. For example, you know, the military expenditure back a few years ago, the total world military expenditure was about $1.1 trillion. It's a huge amount of money that's just wasted. Now besides that, you've got to also consider the damage to you know, human infrastructure all over the world, damage to physical infrastructure, and as well as damage to sort of social infrastructure. So we, we can't, it's very hard to actually to quantify what that is. But if you look closer, you know, if you look in New Zealand, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of crime, there's a cost to crime, there's a, cost to, there's a cost to incarcerating people, there are costs associated with, um, with greed, all sorts of costs which I, I sort of categorise as a destructive economy. And then you've got a third sort of category which is um, perhaps not so inherently bad but it's the indulgent economy which is where we're basically just spending money on stuff, you know. 
where we're encouraged to consume, but I would estimate that the productive economy is probably less than sort of half of what we what we actually have. Half of what we, the wealth we create, we sp we spend on productive things. The rest we sort of really blow, and we can't afford to do that. It's said that two percent of the world's population own half of the world's wealth, and so while while there's still poverty in the world. We, we know that our economic system just isn't working. It just isn't delivering the goods. And so inherent to that is this notion that economic prosperity must be fueled by a sense of justice in terms of ownership, and which is a, which is a very spiritual principle, yes. this notion that, that we really are all in this together. Yes, yes. And that's where, that's where Baha'u'llah's teachings are so powerful, because what Baha'u'llah is saying is that you know, the world... The corrosion of ungodliness is eating away at the vitals of human society. So what we've done, and, and I think if you look at things in economic terms, we've got to the point as in, in human society where we sort of see ourselves as the grown-ups that sort of don't need that stuff anymore. You know, we don't need religion anymore. And we've sort of tossed that out and we've come up with our own economic sort of prescriptions for the world. And they're not working. As Baha'is, we believe that over time, over, over millennia, God has sent us messages. You know, for, for, for the Hindu, it's Krishna, there's, there's Moses, there's Muhammad, there's Zoroaster, Jesus Christ. And, and they've come to us to really teach us how to live. We got to the point where we, we, we felt that we, had now, we were now grown-ups and we didn't need God anymore. So um, then a, a bunch of um, man-made ideologies came along. So what we've been subjected to is basically a godless ideology that hasn't worked. Some of the major disasters of the 20th century can be pinned back clearly to those, human, those man-made ideologies. They haven't worked. They haven't worked for the economy. They haven't worked for the planet. So the Baha'i Faith gives a prescription for for living and, and the economic realities are also covered off in this prescription. Can you describe to mm. me your views on these Baha'i prescriptions? Yeah, I can. Um, and I'd, I'd like to elaborate a little, a little first on how precise they are. You know, because when, say, Moses came, he had to tell us some pretty basic things. And we, we take a long time to learn, us humans, you know. But now Baha'u'llah's come, he's produced volumes of writings that give us very specific guidance. In fact, they, go, they, they, they represent the full gamut, I think, from restating those eternal fundamental laws to putting forward some very clear tools that we can use for the economy. So the whole, the whole scope is there for us to use. We've just got to pick them up and use them. One area I'm really 